How's that? Better? Great. Teamwork. Thank you. I'm Robert Floyd, your town moderator. It's an honor and a privilege to be elected as your moderator and serve you for town meetings. For full transparency and disclosure, I also serve you by being Southampton Cemetery Commissioner, Superintendent of our three cemeteries, on the Board of Directors of the Southampton Historical Society and the Board of Directors for the East Hampton Media, and there is no compensation for any of these privileges. I publicly thank Carl Keener now into his fifth successful year as a deputy moderator. Our town meeting is a business meeting of Southampton, our legislative branch session called pursuant to a posted warrant, the official record of what will be discussed and the only topics on which our town meeting tonight may actually take action. I will read the warrant. Out of Southampton warrant for the special town meeting, October 22nd, 2019. To either of the constables of the town of Southampton at said county, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the precincts of the town of Southampton, county of Hampshire, qualified to vote in elections and town affairs to meet in the cafeteria, gymnasium, William E. Norris School, 34 Palmer Meadow Road, Southampton, Massachusetts, on Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019, at 7 p.m., then and there to act on the following articles. And you are hereby directed to serve this warrant by posting attested copies thereof in six usual places in said town, 14 days at least before the time of holding said meeting. Hereof, fail not and make due return of the warrant with your doings therein to the town clerk at the time and place of meeting as aforesaid, giving under a hands the second day of October in the year 2019, signed by Maureen Grodin, Matt Rowland, John Martin, Francine Tishman, Christine Fowles, select board members, and uh, Jared Hamill, uh, constable with the return. May we have a moment of silence now in keeping with Southampton's culture for those who have moved on ahead since we last met. Thank you. Tonight our special town meeting is being recorded as well as sent out live on public cable access channel 191. Thank you, Ryan Arnold and Tim Riley of the East Hampton Media. The articles enter a warrant that is posted in at least five locations and warns the people of a legislative meeting. You have heeded the warning. The executive branch of our town's government, select board, Nats committee, treasurer, collector, accountant, clerk, administrator, have worked hard to create and weigh in on the articles for tonight's town meeting warrant. Their work is done. Although these members sit up front by our tradition, they individually do not have more of a vote or say tonight than any of you in our special town meeting. Moderators rules, not town council's legal opinion, apply while our town meeting is in progress. Your moderator permits commercial TV cameras, a privilege, not a right, if and only if they agree to remain in the back of the town meeting room on the far side of the floor line or outside the building, not in aisles or hallways. My role as your town moderator is to facilitate, provide an open process that voters trust and administer rules and guidelines in an even-handed manner. I've shortened this a bit tonight fully, impartially, consistently, regardless of who you are, not to assure any particular outcome. I ensure those who wish to address this town meeting have opportunity and ensure the integrity of our town meeting stays as intact as possible. Both sides need will be heard on each article. No one has ever been denied to speak at a town meeting I have moderated. 
Moderators' authority is over process, not outcome. I leave the outcome to you, the fully informed voters of Southampton. Procedures accomplish things instead of manipulating town meeting proceedings. I help every dedicated voter as I serve the town, so if you're inexperienced here, hold your back. Allow me to walk through you through the process tonight. Anyone may challenge my process with a point of order yelled from your seat. I will invite you to the mic where you then describe what pending action is frivolous, relevant, illegal, or contrary to proper procedure. Any attempt to misuse it as a device to usurp the floor will be dealt with firmly. Duties of voters, your responsibility, be the legislative branch of our town government tonight. You have the power to make laws, the power of the purse, and to exercise your freedom of speech. Speaking and participating at a town meeting is a right, but like all rights, it should not be abused nor denied. Ground rules, courtesies, guidelines, important to set them early, then stick with them. Town meeting is a legislator subject to its own rules within the Commonwealth laws. It needs rules. One of my duties as your moderator is to protect rights of individuals against illegal encroachment, unintentional or otherwise. Our town meetings are, connect, are conducted in accordance with general laws, our bylaws, traditional customs and practices we have followed for many years with guidance by the principles and rules of conduct in town meeting time. A handbook of parliamentary law. This is not a Bible. Organic process as our customs, traditions, and practices evolve. Once a motion is read and I have asked to receive the second, then I invite a pro and then a con statement. All discussions must be relevant to a motion under a Warren article and within the scope of each article before us, merits or lack thereof for the motion. It's when after a comment is ruled out of order or scope, the speaker continues to debate the moderator. That's when the speaker is directed to sit down. Speaking at the mic, ready to contribute something new, please approach the mic up front Stand in line to be recognized in turn by the moderator. First come, first heard. I recognize speakers only standing at the mic unless it's a point of order where you get to yell from your seat. Address the moderator. State your name and address clearly. Please direct your opinions, questions, answers, and address all remarks to me, your town moderator. Do not speak directly to other voters. This is designed to prevent lecturing, bullying, intimidation, and cross-examinations. Town meeting conduct is the moderator's responsibility as authorized by our Mass General Laws, Chapter 37, Subchapter 15 and 17. Speak up to five minutes at a time, provided you stick to the subject of the motion at hand and address me, not the town meeting audience. And no more than twice on any article except to correct an error or answer a question. Please allow everyone an opportunity to be heard before you request to be heard a second time on an article. Remarks concise to the point. I will allow anyone who previously spoke to address the meeting a second time with a new point or rebuttal. No repetitions, no repetitions. Before you vote yes or no, you individually are free to question, to amend, not encouraging this, and will not discourage this either, and to table or kill any motion. That is, legislate all in a civilized way. Cross-examinations are out of order. Rude behavior, especially shouting, bullying, lecturing, personal attacks will not be tolerated. Anyone unwilling to comply with these rules will be removed after their third warning. So let us this be our first warning. Anyone unsatisfied with a lack of information for an article may make a motion to adjourn the town meeting to a time certain for the presenter to obtain the necessary information. Our pre-appointed counters, when needed, will count a section as a pair, then compare counts. When they do not agree, count resumes for a complete and accurate count to be announced out loud so all can hear at the same time. They count from front to back. Any reason, any reason to move the order of the articles? Okay, we'll keep them that way. 
Outside speaker, as is our custom, we vet somebody new to address you. I will read the name, Miss Abby Thibodeau. Without objection, this non-voter with an interest will be permitted to speak in this and future town meetings. Hearing no objections, we will proceed. Thank you. Simply because someone states something, it does not make it true. A majority leaning towards approving or denying does not make it right by itself. Listen courteously, vote exactly as you think right. Thank you all for your patience and respecting everyone tonight. These guidelines will assist us in a more efficient meeting. May I hear a motion for Article 1, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriates $1,600,000 to pay cost of replacing the East Street Bridge in the town of Southampton, said funds to be used for construction, fees and permits, engineering, temporary easements, and any other eligible and incidental costs associated with the construction of the new bridge and the demolition of the existing bridge. And to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7.1, or any other enabling authority, and to use bonds and notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds and notes approved by this vote, less any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of the costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded, and I want to remind everyone that we're voting on the motion, not the article, and not the summary. So it's the exact motion which fits under the umbrella, or as they say in town moderator uh, education places, in the four corners of the article. So who would like to speak on the motion for Article 1? Good evening. Ed Gibson, town administrator. And I'm sure you all remember seeing this same article uh, back in a little, February, little, little closer, right? in February of 2019. Uh, and in cases where the vote is taken at a special town meeting before the electoral ballot, uh, the electoral ballot has to occur within 90 days of the special town meeting vote. Now, if this is the first year we've actually reversed our town meeting and uh, our annual town election, uh, so there's about a two-week difference. The timeline was a little bit over 90 days to the actual electoral ballot, uh, so the town meeting vote has to recur again. And while in the occurrence where the special town meeting occurs first and there's a 90-day timeline, the if the election ballot stands, which was done in May. However, the, uh, the timeline, there is no 90-day timeline now for the, the town meeting to take this up and vote on it again. However, both bond council and our town attorney recommended bringing it back as rel relatively soon as possible while people remembered why they voted for it and passed it uh, the first time around in February. Uh, the other other particular uh, issue here is uh, the uh, the design for the replacement of the East Street Bridge is moving along. It's pretty close to 75% design. Uh, we would actually like to go out for bid over the winter months uh, for that project uh, and actually start in the springtime. Uh, so we're bringing it back to special town meeting at, at this time. Uh, the state has extended the million dollar. Uh, uh, mass works grant that they had given us for uh, for this particular project uh, we're asking for the 1.6 million dollars uh, from from our voters to um, basically come up with the difference to a project that's 2.6 million dollars uh, so this would allow actually allow us to leverage that uh, million dollar dollar uh, mass works grant um, if we weren't able to do that and we had to give that money back to the state and not move forward uh, sometime in the near future, whether it be three years or five years from now, uh, the town on its own dime would have to come up with the entire $2.6 million uh, plus whatever the inflationary rate is. 
Uh, that being said, we were originally going to do a PowerPoint presentation this evening. Uh, however, there is no projector, so Charlie, rather than using the PowerPoint projector for all of you, is going to do this the old-fashioned way uh, and go over the handout. We, we have a pro. Do we have a con before we continue? Seeing no con, please con proceed, Charlie. Does anybody really have any questions? In introduce There's, yourself. I'm Charlie Konecki, 146 Valley Road. I was one of the uh, people that moved forward to get the state grant on this bridge. Uh, I have a working knowledge on how this all evolved, but I'm also realizing that everyone wants to go home, so rather than me standing here and lecturing you a third time on the same material, if you have no questions, I would just call for the vote. Um, I don't accept that. I'll be the one to ask for the questions. Thank you. Is there anybody that has any questions? Please go right up to the mic. I saw a hand wave. Oh, you're there. Good. Yeah. Tom Livingston, Pomeroy Meadow Road. Uh, just a question. We've already voted on this at the, at the uh, you know, in May. Do we have to vote on this again if this gets approved tonight? Not in an election, only tonight. Okay, thank you. I know the answer, so I'll, I'll save time. Doesn't weigh in an opinion. Any other questions? This requires a two-thirds vote. The Finance Committee recommended, and we're going to use paper ballot because it's bonding, and we have a bylaw that requires us to do it. So you got the pink slip, uh, yes, no, so um, I want you to rip it in half. And all those in favor of this motion under Article 1, then you drop in the yes um, uh, piece of paper into the box. Those opposed to the motion under Article 1, you keep the yes and you drop in the no. So you rip your, your paper in half. We're going to vote. And it's going to be a two-thirds uh, required and it's going to be paper ballot. So create a yes and a no and however you feel put the other part in your pocket if you have a pocket and drop what you want to have happen in that box. We pass the box around. Other towns require you stand up in a single line. You go to the end of the hall, and there you're handed the yes or no ballot. And you have maybe three seconds to rip it and put it in and return the other half into a jar or a box. But this is our tradition, passing the, the box of the hat around. We didn't do this last time because the moderator couldn't find where it said it, but uh, subsequent meetings with town clerk and town moderator, town administrator nailed where it is. So uh, we will, we've done it historically and we will continue to do so. And not doing it did not make it legal, illegal rather, last time. Good question. We will not hold up the meeting while they count because there's no contingent articles that would influence um, your decision based on the count. <laughs> the first time we tried this, I didn't explain it very well and I had everybody put in their yes votes and then we had to pass the box around for the no vote. So I've improved, I'm not voting. I can, but I'm not. Moderator needs to be objective. <laughs> I thank everyone for coming out in this rainy 
chilly evening. Um, we made our quorum of 50, so uh, we're good to go. And don't look for Easter eggs in the box. There's none. I took them all out. This will be a slow part in the video for the people at home. They're, they're taking a popcorn break and whatever else. <coughs> Again, this is being televised live, and there will be a link available for anybody who wants to see everybody passing around the box and the rest of the meeting. <coughs> everybody vote. We're all set. Okay, may I hear a motion for Article 2, please? To see if the town will vote to rescind the vote under Article 2 of the July 26, 2018 Southampton Special Town Meeting or take any action well, that's the article. relative thereto. That's, we're good about taking any other action. That's only for the article. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Who would like to speak on this? Ed Gibson, Town Administrator. Uh, as m most of you may remember, back in July of 2018, we had a special town meeting which had two articles on it uh, to fund the acquisition of 111 Glendale Road. Um, at the time, the town did not know whether we were going to be awarded a $400,000 land grant for the acquisition, so two separate articles were put on that warrant and both passed. One was uh, an article to fund uh, the acquisition from CPC funds and the land grant if we got it. Um, and actually we en <laughs> did end up getting the land grant and that's how we acquired the property. The second article, which is the one we're looking to rescind here, um, was an article that we would use CPC funds and borrow the rest, the $400,000 to acquire that land. Uh, that was not needed, it was not used. However, we have two actual voted appropriations on our town books, so the DOR will look at it that way. Uh, so we are looking to actually rescind that uh, Article 2 of the July 26, 2018 uh, town meeting to take that off our financial books. Uh, so DOR will not count that against any, any of our uh, bonding requirements or cap or what have you. Uh, we are not rescinding the purchase. We used Article 1 to actually purchase it, so this one is not needed. So it's basically a, bo a bookkeeping uh, cleanup. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone who wishes to speak against the motion for this article? Okay. Anybody have any questions, comments? Seeing none, uh, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 2, please signify by saying aye. Opposed, please signify by saying nay. The motion for Article 2 passes unanimously. May I hear a motion for Article 3, please? Yes, Mr. Moderator. It's not. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer a total of $270 from operating stabilization to the prior year bills account for the unpaid bill from Goose Town Communications from fiscal year 2018. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded, and this needs a nine-tenths majority because it's the next year and it's a special town meeting. Otherwise, it would be four-fifths for the annual. Who would like to speak on this, please? Uh, Vicki. Uh, Vicki Morrow, Pomeroy Meadow Road, um, town accountant. Um, this bill, um, Goose Town hadn't rebuilt us when they originally did this um, reprogramming of the portable radios. It came to the chief's attention in June, and so we have to, because it's last year's bill, vote um, at town meeting to appropriate funds to pay this. Thank you. Is there anybody who would like to speak against this article? Does anybody have any questions? comments. Seeing none will vote. 
All those in favor of the motion under Article 3, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Hearing no nays, it's unanimous and meets our requirements of passing by nine-tenths majority. May her a motion for Article 4, please. Virginia Ahart. Move to see if the town will vote to transfer $6,000 from community preservation funds to the Southampton Youth Athletic Association for the purchase of a movable scoreboard to be used for the softball teams. Said funds to be transferred from community preservation surcharges undesignated account. I have a motion to hear a second. Anyone? I have a motion and a second, and this needs a simple majority, and the Finance Committee recommends. Who would like to speak on this, please? Well, <laughs> the uh, SYAA came to community preservation and appraised us as a fact that while you can go to a baseball game with the boys, you'll see the scores. <laughs> if you go to a girls' softball game, you won't see any scoreboard. And in the sh it was time that we really did something for the softball team. And uh, it is a movable, um, can be pulled around like a trailer. It is battery operated, so it doesn't have to be wired in. It can be moved from field to field, and they will share if needed. Thank you. Anybody like to speak against this motion under this article? Do we have any questions? Anybody who has any questions or comments uh, can not wait their turn. They can simply go right up to the mic. Maureen Groden, uh, HR Lane. I obviously support having a scoreboard for softball. I have two questions. One is um, who purchased the scoreboard for baseball? And the other one is, this is a surcharge uh, on taxes, and how often has CPC funds been used for private organizations uh, rather than municipal? I must confess, I know nothing, <laughs> nothing about um, the scoreboards for the, the boys' game. Uh, it's just that the, I know the baseball team has received quite a bit of help. Um, I have no idea how many times we have funded SYAA um, in a number of their activities um, in renewing fields and things like that. SYAA is really one of our town committees. Uh, it's not under the town government, but it is one of the very active parts of our town. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Okay. Well, who, who's next? Go ahead. <laughs> Vicki Morrow. Um, Vicki Morrow, Palmer Meadow Road, town accountant, um, previous SYA member. But being the accountant, um, any money that we had given to SYA had to flow through my office. So we paid $12,500 for backstops for the baseball fields. We paid probably close to 80 grand to redo the baseball fields, including the scoreboard at Conant Park. We paid $65,000 approximately for the um, play structure that's out here for the little kids. And we also, this is just in, since I've been here, since 2012. And we've also given money to the church um, to rebuild their ramp um, you know, on the back where people will be able to get in. And so far, that's kind of where we've been. So. Thank you. Tammy Walunas, 298 College Highway. I was a volunteer with the SYAA for over nine years doing sponsorship directors and um, secretary. And a lot of that money came from the sponsors in this town for the first scoreboard. The second was gone, th went through the, CP the CPA money, CPC money. Thank you. Are we getting better answering your question, Ms. Groda? Okay, good. 
Anybody else have any questions, comments? Go right up there. No need to be polite. Cindy Palmer, Glendale Road. My question um, is, um, and I probably need clarification, um, was, let me think about this. Um, wasn't the intent of uh, improving Libri Field to allow outside maybe teams or organizations to periodically rent the fields as needed? This and might thus be out of the scope. Out of the yeah, scope. I'm just trying is, to know if is, there was another income this source. Of, this is out, out of the scope of the, scope of the uh, uh, good question. It's out of the scope of the article and the motion. I might point out that this field is not the Labrie field. It's behind the school here. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments? Any questions? Okay, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 4, we need a simple majority. Please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please indicate by saying nay. nay. The motion for Article 4 passes by majority. Oh, I wondered why you were coming up. The uh, results are in. I was going to have you read them, but that was an afterthought which I knew. Uh, six for our motion for Article 1, we had the paper ballot. Uh, it passes by majority. 67 yes, 8 no. And it meets its two-thirds requirement. Thank you. Good Teamwork. All right. Um, may I hear... The motion for Article 5, please. Move that the town fund... Get a little real close, like very close to the mic. Move that the town vote to transfer $16,000 from community preservation funds to the parent-teacher organization of the Norris School for the purchase of a playground shade shelter for the pre-K kindergarten playground area, said funds to be transferred from community preservation surcharges to undesignated account. Motion made to hear a second. Motion made and seconded. We need a simple majority. Finance Committee recommends. Who would like to speak on this, please? Abby Thibodeau, 16 Old County Road. Get a little closer, Abby, to uh, the mic. Abby Thibodeau, 16 Old County Road. Um, so I'm a ninth grade student at HRHS and a Girl Scout senior. Recently, I've been working on my Gold Award project. It is my goal to purchase t and install two small pavilions to to provide shade for the preschool playground at Norris. This would help kids and teachers by protecting them from sunburn, and it would also make the preschool more eligible for grants from the state. I've reviewed the project with a civil engineer and then prevent, presented options and pricing from several companies to teachers, principal, and the assistant principal. After they decided on the best selection, I went back out and got competitive bids on their preferred design, including logistics and the cost of the installation. The design and best price were reviewed with the Community Preservation Committee, School Committee, and PTO, who all voted unanimously in favor. Thank you for your time, and I hope I have your support on this project. Thank you. Anyone would like to speak against this? Anybody have any questions, comments? Come right up. Christina Madsen, 40 Rattle Hill Road. I have a couple of questions. How many children are attend the preschool, um, roughly? Who can answer that? I'm not sure on the preschool, but the kindergarten classes are also involved with this. Okay. So there's like uh, at least 50 or more of them coming in next year. We probably don't know all of the preschool right now anyway. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, I'm just... I'm you just, have more, go ahead. I'm just trying to get an idea of how many children this will benefit. Is, this, is the school in session during the summertime? I can't 
swear to that, but I do think that there are some programs. Uh, I don't know what grade levels or anything, but it gets, if you're aware of where this little playground is, it is in an area where there are no trees nearby, just the, the building with the sun shining off of that and right out in the open. I answer your question? Yes. Um, may I ask two more yes. questions? <laughs> uh, is, has any consideration been given to the cost of future maintenance for these structures? Um, so these structures are um, made of steel, so I'm not quite sure how much maintenance would be needed, but um, I have talked to the highway department and they have said they would help with the maintenance of it. So. Thank you. That answer your question? Yes, one last question. Were trees considered? I don't think where that is that trees would be appropriate. Thank you. Can I answer your question? Can you describe where it is, please? Uh, it's very, if, well, you're out here. Uh, if you were to go right around the end of this building, you would be there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments, any questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion under Article 5, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please indicate by saying nay. nay. The motion for Article 5 passes by majority. May I hear a motion for Article 6, please? Move that, uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to change the town bylaws Article 7, Section 1 by amending the existing language as noted, deleting existing language with a strike through and with adding new language shown in boldface text as set forth in Article 6 of the warrant for the October 22nd, 2019 special town meeting. I have a motion for Article 6. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Gibson, you expressed and explained it so well the other day. Would you like to get up and? This amendment to Article Sec 7 of our town bylaws would make three changes. Uh, one in section 1A would add the term and may periodically rather than just shall annually. Uh, so the treasurer may provide uh, a list of delinquent taxpayers to the town departments and boards uh, on more than just once a year basis, uh, but periodically provide them. Uh, the second change is in that same section A, uh, cross out for not less than a 12 month period. Um, the old, older, this was fashioned after the old uh, state statute, uh, which required that uh, delinquency be uh, 12 months or more for the taxpayer to um, withhold, revoke, uh, not issue, non-renew uh, licenses such as uh, building permits, uh, liquor licenses, um, common vehicular licenses, entertainment licenses. Uh, but back in 2017, uh, with one of the first municipal modernization acts, uh, the state changed that and they allowed uh, local communities to adopt any period of time or no period of, of time rather than that 12 month requirement. Uh, probably last fall, I started talking about this uh, with the, the select board uh, and asking them if they would be interested in adopting a shorter time period than uh, what was originally required to be more than 12 months. Um, they were interested, they had a conversation about it, um, and it's an interesting balance because uh, some communities just said, 
if you're if you're if you're delinquent one day uh, we're going to withhold, have the ability to withhold your licenses. But uh, the select board, and I also met with our finance committee and also our internal finance team to get their opinions. And because this uh, applies to both residents and our businesses, um, they felt that there should be some type of balance and uh, they thought that a six, uh, greater than six month time period uh, would be reasonable. Uh, that would allow anybody that may have uh, been injured, lost their job, what have you, uh, to have time to um, recuperate, get back on their feet if that was the reason that they weren't paying taxes. Uh, we're, but the town is still looking for, shall we say, the stick to make sure that our, uh, our larger businesses uh, stay current or more current than they may be uh, with that. So uh, both, uh, all three, the select board, the internal finance team, and the finance committee thought six months would be a good way to, to go about that. And the, and the select board, if this article passes at this special town meeting, it still needs to go to the attorney general for the attorney general's approval. Um, the select board has approved a policy that in, in the instance that those things do happen uh, affirmatively, uh, that there is a policy in place that it would be more than a, require more than a six month delinquency to withhold any of those licenses. This does not pertain to uh, any of the, like uh, a birth certificate, a marriage license, um, or items like that. That that exemption still stays in the existing, uh, existing bylaw. And then the last, uh, change uh, to it is, is actually in section D and it's some house, clean, uh, house cleaning. It changes the term board of selectmen to select board. Thank you. Anyone like to speak in opposition of the motion for this article? <laughs> Are there any? Go ahead. Jim Sini, <clears throat> excuse me, Jim Sini High Street. I'm not in opposition, I have a question. Is this appropriate for this yes. time? I, I appreciate Ed, you clarifying because as I read it, um, for not less than 12 month period was stricken, but I don't see anything in here about six months. So as I read it now, it's just, it could be zero days one day. I'll, I'll need clarification on that, please. Thank you. The select board has adopted a policy that goes along with this if this does pass town meeting and then is approved by the attorney general that makes that time, the delinquency time period, uh, uh, time period greater than six months. So that policy is used in conjunction with this bylaw. That, it's a town policy. That answer your question? Yeah. Right, put we're, your we're, comments. We're, we're adopting this on a local town okay. level, not a state level. Oh, come, no, sir, hey, Jim, come to the mic and ask me the question. I'm sorry, I'm being really concrete. I don't no, no, see six months in here, Jim, so I don't. Jim, ask me the question, please. Put all your comments to the model. I don't see six months in here, so I'm I understand under, I'm your a, question. So that's my question still. That's good. I don't understand um, uh, where the town's adopting six I hear six your months. question. We're going to have Ed address his answer to me. It is I just in, don't want any, Ed, it, turn around and okay. face me. I don't want any cross-examination. <laughs> it's in a select board policy. It's in a select board policy. To answer your question, great. Teamwork. Thank you. Do we have any other comments, any other questions, concerns? Seeing none, we'll vote on the motion under Article 6. Simple majority. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please indicate by saying nay. The uh, Article uh, 6 motion passes by majority. Now, as we have in the past, when the motion is really minuscule compared to a long article, we're going to have Article 7 read. Then we're going to have the motion that we'll vote on read. So would somebody, you can take turns. Now you tell me? Now I tell you. I just realized that myself. 
<laughs> okay, Article 7, Town Bylaw, new article, Solid Waste Recycling Bylaw. To see if the town will vote to accept as an addition to the Southampton General Bylaws, a solid waste recycling bylaw is printed herein below or take any other action relative thereto. Solid waste recycling bylaw, section one, authority. In accordance with Massachusetts General Law, chapter 40, section 8H, the Board of Health, uh, referred to as the Board of the Town of Southampton, referred to as the town, shall be charged with the promulgation and implementation of this bylaw and any regulation adopted under this bylaw. Two, purpose. In order to protect the environment, promote recycling, and in compliance with Massachusetts mandated waste bans, the town hereby establishes mandatory separation of recyclable and combustible yard waste, com, uh, com, compostable yard waste from the solid waste stream. Three definitions. Recyclable or recyclable material means a material that has the potential to be recycled and which is pre-sorted. Such materials shall include, but are not limited to, containers, films, wraps made from metal, glass, plastic, or paper, and two, newspaper, office paper, cardboard, and other grades of paper. Recyclable or recyclable material means a material that has the potential to be recycled and which is pre-sorted. Recyclable materials include biodegradable paper, but does not include organic materials that would be composted or converted or construction and demolition waste unless it has been separated and kept separate into at least the following categories. Asphalt, brick, concrete, ceiling tiles, wood, metals, plaster and wallboard, roofing materials and carpet. Compostable yard waste means leaves, grass clippings, garden waste, weeds, prunings and brush. Number four, applicability. This applies to all owners, tenants, occupants and property managers of residential, multifamily, commercial, industrial, municipal and industrial structures and properties in the town and to any and all waste hauler duly licensed by the board. Number five, waste haulers. Five, one, every waste hauler must be duly licensed by the board on an annual basis to operate within the town. Five, two, every waste hauler shall provide an integrated waste management service whereby collection of recyclables is provided to all trash collection customers. Five, three, every waste hauler shall, upon request, provide the board with an updated customer list, which includes the names and addresses of customers within the town, the degree of service, and pickup schedule. Upon request by the board, every waste hauler shall also provide educational materials to customers. Five, four, waste haulers shall allow for unannounced inspections of collected re refuge or recyclables by the board or its designated agents where the waste hauler is required to demonstrate satisfactory collection procedures. Section six, penalties. The following penalties apply to residents who are permitted to use the town of Southampton transfer station. First offense, $25. Second offense, $50. Third offense, permit suspension for the remainder of the fiscal year, which is July 1 to ju June 30th. Commercial trash haulers are subject to penalties as stated in trash haul and recyclable licensing and operational regulations. All penalties are enforced by the Southampton Board of Health or their designated agent. Severability. 7-1, if any section of this bylaw is declared invalid or unenforceable for any reason, said decision shall not affect any other section of this bylaw, which shall remain in full force and effect or take any other action relative thereto. Appeal, section um, eight, any party cited for a violation of this bylaw may obtain such reviews of such citation by filing a written notice of appeal with the Town of Southampton Board of Health within seven days, exclusive of Saturday, Sunday, and legal holidays from the date of said citation. A hearing will be held within 60 days from the date of the filing of the appeal. Written notice of the hearing date will be delivered to the applicant at least two weeks prior to the scheduled date. The hearing will be conducted in accordance with the established procedures of the Board of Health. Following such hearing, the Board of Health may uphold, rescind, or modify any such citation. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote oh, to... Am oh, we read the article, and I simply want to say that it's for those of you who have forgot your reading glasses at home, those... Uh, you watching at home don't know what this is about, and for those hitting the link down the road or wondering what we voted on, so please continue with the motion. Mr. Moderator, I move that town vote to amend the town bylaw by adding an article, Solid Waste Recycling Bylaw, as set forth in Article 7 of the warrant for the October 22, 2019 special town meeting. Motion made, do I hear a second? Second. Motion made and second, and thank you for that reading. A simple majority in the Finance Committee states it's not in their purview. Who would like to speak on this motion, please? 
Mr. Moderator, Charlie Konecki, 146 Valley Road, Southampton. I am on the Board of Health in Southampton. I want to give a quick overview. Basically what has been happening here is the town of Southampton has enjoyed grants from the Department of Environmental Protection for a number of years because of our proactivity relative to recycling in our community at our transfer station. The Department of Environmental Protection has now notified us for us to score higher to receive additional grant money, we need to adopt this bylaw. This bylaw has been written and submitted to us by the Commonwealth as the model as to we need to move forward with. So at this point in time, this is the reason this is in front of the voters. Thank you. Anyone would like to speak against this article? Uh, Patrick Monahan, 125 Pleasant Street. Uh, Mr. Moderator, it's not against the entire article. I'm concerned about section 5.3. Every waste hauler shall upon request provide the board with an updated customer list? No. Uh, if, I, if I choose a hauler, it's not the government's opinion of whom I choose. No, it's, I don't believe that they should be giving a list out of who their customers are. I don't want my name handed out to everybody. Are you making an amendment to the uh, motion? I didn't hear you, but next. My name is Barbara Laflamme, 20 Cook Road. I would like to draw attention to Section 8, the appeal process. In reading this article, it's my understanding that the regulations have been developed by the Board of Health. It is also my understanding that citations are issued by the, bo by the Board of Health or their agent. It's also come to my attention that any appeal must be brought to the Board of Health for their determination. I don't think that that provides the independence that's needed for a hearing. The person who promulgates the law, enforces the law, should not also be the authority to determine whether the citation is valid or not. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments, questions? May I answer the questions? Yes. Question one relative to uh, the list. All I can say is this was developed by the Commonwealth Department of Environmental Protection. It's a model that's used throughout the Commonwealth. I don't know how they've determined that that is appropriate, but that's what's been handed to the Board of Health. Concerning the question relative to the Board of Health and appeal process and monitoring and everything, if you were to look at uh, Section 105 CMR 410 of the Housing Code, you would find that the Board of Health does the inspections, issues the orders, and does the review of appeal relative to that. If you were to look at 105 CMR 590 of the Food Code, you would also see that the Board of Health, which is supposed to be represented by elected officials of this community, does the appeal review for that same code. This is a standard policy relative to public health in the Commonwealth where the Board of Health does the review. That is not the final say though. If a Board of Health determines that something needs to happen and they decided that this is what needs to happen, the offended party still has the right to bring it to a court to have it heard. That's the final judgment in this system. Thank you. Did that answer your questions, both of you? I think Charlie has attempted to... Um, don't, don't use first names. Previous I'm speaker. I'm sorry. The previous speaker has indicated that other agencies have used this same format However, that still does not change the article that's before us and the appeal process that's been presented to us this evening. I would recommend not passing at least this section of the appeal process. When you say recommending, we're going to vote on, on the whole, uh, on all of it. So are you wanting to make an amendment uh, for this uh, article? Uh, before we vote on the motion. Are you willing to amend it or are you simply uh, making a recommendation? I'm pointing it out to the voters. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Just want to be clear. Thank you. 
Yes, Mr. Minder, I'd like to make a motion that uh, Section 5.3 be deleted from this article. Section 5.3. Section 5.3. That we uh, have every the waste hauler shall, upon request, provide the board with an updated yeah, customer I list. Okay. No. We have a motion uh, to amend um, our, our motion uh, under our article, uh, and we have... Um, do I hear a second? All right, we have a second. Okay, we have a we have a motion to amend, and so we're going to talk about the amendment first. We're only going to talk about uh, section 5.3, the merits or lack thereof, and then we're going to vote on that amendment, and then we're going to go back to the full amendment for the whole article. Mr. Moderator. Point of order. Yes. Is it not the policy of this town that if an amendment is being submitted, it has to be in writing and submitted to you? That's true. Thanks for the reminder. Thank you. We don't often have amendments. Five point three for Article Seven. Mr. Moderator, make a motion to amend uh, Article 7 by deleting Section 5.3. Okay, hand that to me and create a duplicate, please, for the town clerk. So we have a second for this motion? Second. Second, okay. Motion uh, made and seconded. Uh, who would like to uh, discuss this? Perhaps the author of the. Uh, uh, proposed amendment. Yes, Mr. Moderator. Again, uh, providing a customer list, uh, degrees of service and pickup schedule, that's a business decision on their part, but giving my name out is not a business decision. I, I don't give my name to them. I don't hire them to hand my name out. Who, whom I choose is my is my consideration, not the towns. They, they don't have to know who I pick up for a service. They don't have to know whether I have Spectrum or Comcast. They don't have to know who I use for a trash hauler either. Thank you. Who else would like to speak on this uh, proposed amendment? Cindy Palmer, Glendale Road, a uh, question. Should, if this section is removed, would this negate the opportunity for our town to get the additional grant monies that were, was earlier mentioned? There's something in here that answers your question. And somebody want to help me out? It basically says if any part is changed, everything stands as is. If any section of this bylaw is declared invalid or unenforceable for any reason, said decision shall not affect any other section of this bylaw, thank you, by the way, which shall remain in full force and effect. Mr. Mr. Moderator. Does that answer your question? That answers your question. That does not answer her question. Okay. The servability clause relative to that is rel in relationship to going to court and having the court strike down the section of the law. We are trying to pass this bylaw at the request of the Department of Environmental Protection so that the town becomes eligible for more grant funding. As for the haulers and the haulers list, we must not forget the fact that there is another general statute that allows the Board of Health, in fact, is the principal law that allows the Board of Health to license all the haulers and to put conditions on their licenses, even without this. 
Thank you. Uh, Tom Livingston, Pomeroy Meadow Road. I just want to point out that if we vote to delete all of Section 5.3, we're also deleting the upon request by the board that the waste hauler shall provide educational material to customers about recycling. One can make an amendment to an amendment. But that's as far as it goes, if that's what you want to do, but you'd have to put in writing. I understand. Who else would like to speak on this? Seeing none, we'll vote on the amendment. All those in favor of uh, deleting section 5.3, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed to deleting it, please signify by saying nay. Nay. Going to count. Counters? They're going to count from the front to the back. All those in favor of the amendment removing 5.3, please signify by raising your card high so they can count. And they're going to count from front to back. Come right up front. It's, re it's removing, it's removing, yeah. Uh, put your hands up for those who are in favor of the amendment so you can count again. Vicki? Vicki, could you hand them a mic when they come up? I want everybody to hear whatever they're telling me and hand that to them. So. Or let them speak on that one. Six. Six. On that side. Okay, put your, we, you counted six. Okay. Right. Eighteen. Eighteen. Anybody else? Those uh, opposed of the amendment, uh, raise your cards, please. Twenty-four. Seventeen. We all good or still counting? Somebody answer me? We're good. Okay. Um, the yeses were 24, noes were 41, the amendment uh, fails. So we're back to the original motion. Anybody want to talk about the original motion under Article 7? If not, we'll vote. Simple majority. Finance Committee not in their purview. All those in favor of the motion in Article 7, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, please indicate by saying nay. nay. Raise your hands, those in favor of the motion. Raise your cards. Put them down. Those opposed to this motion, raise your hands. 
the motion passes by majority. May I hear a motion for Article 8, please? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to accept the clause in MGL C 59, Section 5, reducing the number of years of residency for veterans to qualify for certain tax exemptions from two years to one year as set forth in Article 8 of the warrant for the October 22, 2019 special town meeting. I have a motion to hear a second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, simple majority. Finance Committee recommends. Who would like to speak in favor of this? Jerry Paquette, 9 with Spring Meadow Lane. I'm also the, uh, the veteran services officer for the town of Southampton. Can, can I go ahead and read the summary? Um, or, yes. Most people probably don't know much about this. Um, cause it, you know, it, it pertains to a very uh, small portion of the population, which the military members in this country are less than 2% of the population throughout the whole country. So I'm just going to elaborate on this a little bit. The local adoption of this clause of the Massachusetts statutes would allow that veterans or their surviving spouses and families be eligible for certain allowed veterans tax exemptions upon having one full tax year of residency in the town of Southampton rather than the two full tax years of residency requirement under Massachusetts general statutes. The beneficiaries include some veterans, their spouses who own the domicile and their surviving spouses and some surviving parents and spouses of active duty military personnel who died or due to or who died during or due to military service under the mass general law chapter 59 section 5 in short the residency requirement is to have lived in massachusetts for two consecutive years before the tax year begins reducing the residency requirement would allow the applicant to receive this benefit after having lived in Massachusetts for only one full tax year and not to have to wait the additional year. So the quantity of veterans who move to Southampton from out of state and fall under one of the clauses to receive any of the seven levels of property tax exemption would be minimal, if any, each year. However, although the exemption could be as low as $400 a year for that one additional year, the positive impact could be for that veteran, parent, or surviving spouse could be significant and the feeling of being welcome, welcomed with open arms as a Purple Heart community that Southampton is. Voting for this local option gives Southampton another tool to assist veterans and their families. Thank you. Is there anybody who would like to speak in opposition to this motion? Seeing none, anybody would like to speak at all? I, I'd uh, like to add. Yes, you, have, you can have a second time at the mic. Go right ahead. Thank you. So basically, just in a nutshell, what this means is um, so th this pertains mostly to disabled veterans. So there's many disabled veterans living in our town. Um, the disability ratings from the VA, uh, the federal program, Veterans Affairs, they range between 10% and 100%. Um, a veteran could have, uh, for example, suffer some hearing loss, which is a 10% disability alone. But if they have hearing loss, a back injury and maybe a head injury, they could be 50% disabled. So just using that as an example, if a veteran who is 50% disabled under the, um, the current law, he, he's gonna receive $400 a year property tax exemption. So I, I mean, I pay about $6,000 a year. So if I were a veteran, would 50, if I was 50% disabled, coming to the town, uh, coming to Massachusetts from out of state, I'd have to wait under current law two years to get my $400 a year off my $6,000 property tax bill. It, it's not a lot, but under Massachusetts General Law Chapter 59, it's something. And it's, you know, if I were walking down the street and I saw $400, I'd, I'd probably pick it up. Put this in perspective a, a little more, 
just another example, okay, that, that $400 falls under Clause 22. Clause 22B, a veteran who suffered in the line of duty, permanent loss of both feet, both hands, or both eyes, just another example. So if I did a deployment, I come back without my hands, it, it, I get uh, a savings of $1,250 off my $6,000 a year tax bill. Again, it's not a lot, but it's something. Widows would get a full tax exemption. So a little bit of history, um, not even two years ago, the law stated five years. So if, if I was living in Texas or Delaware and I moved to Massachusetts, I'd have to wait five years to get this, any of these clauses, any tax exemptions. The current law under the Brave Act II, 2018, it reduced the five years to two years. The current law states towns can and adopt a, a local option to reduce the two years, which it is currently, which is great. The Brave Act II is an is a excellent act from 2018, but whether it was five years way back or the current two years, the towns can vote to reduce to the local option, which is one year. So that veteran moving from Texas or Delaware that comes to Massachusetts, um, well, I should say, if we vote for it, it, if they come to Southampton, instead of having to wait two years, they only have to wait one year. Okay. Thank you. Teresa Adams, 20 Wilcott Road. My husband, Roger, was killed in Iraq in 2009. Roger and I both grew up in Massachusetts. He was born in Montague in 1972. He went to elementary school in Gill, Massachusetts and graduated from Franklin Technical Vocation School in 1990. He loved the Boston Red Sox, a good ham grinder and snow, yes, snow. After graduation, he moved to Kentucky to spend time with his mom. He wasn't there long when he decided to join the Marine